Seeing into the future live. This is Rackspace's continuing coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Now here's Robert Skoll. This is Robert Scoble at the uh, Rackspace Startup uh, Area Studio at TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. We're interviewing all day long innovators in uh, the contextual space. Today we're uh, with uh, Marcus Nelson, an advocate, and uh, he's uh, showing me a new way to work, a new way to empower our employees, and really we're here to talk about Apple, but who are you, first of yeah. all? Yeah, uh, my name is Marcus Nelson, as you said. Uh, I um, founded a company called Advocate, I used to head up social media at a small startup called Salesforce. You know yeah. who those guys are, yeah. right? And uh, where I headed up... Almost went to work for Steve Gilmore, standing Steve right behind Gilmore. you. Yeah, there's Steve. Nobody can see him. You can't see Steve, but he's right here. <laughs> <laughs> there's Steve. Okay, there now is. we can see him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, had a great experience at Salesforce. Was there for three years. Uh, but one of the issues I kept running into is, you know, Mark would want something to... Uh, tweet about uh, an event like Dreamforce, or yeah. they'd want us to post about some new uh, you know, mission critical product that came out or something like that. And invariably you just come up with these emails or it'd be a post on Chatter, and you had no way of like really seeing if anybody actually engaged with the content, did they actually tweet it out, did they post it, and then of course, what was the return on the investment, right? Yeah. If I have my employees posting this stuff out, wouldn't it be really nice to be able to see, hey, this actually got somebody to go to Dreamforce or got somebody to make a purchase. And so creating tools around that and collaborating with social media yeah. and then as well as measuring it so that you can report how each individual uh, employee is contributing to the bottom line. Yeah, this is sort of like a new kind of Yammer or Salesforce chatter or something like that, right? It, uh, yeah, you could probably paint it in that picture. We, we, it's not really a social network, is no, it? No, it's like a social media back channel, right? Yeah. So everyone can collaborate over content. We actually have areas where you can actually contribute to, um, you see a real good post, should I do a quick yeah, thing Yeah, let's here? see it. So let's say, um, you know, say I'm in the feed, right? Actually, here's a notification right over here in the upper right hand corner. You can see uh, Abraham's done a post here. So when I click on it, it brings me to this page, which I'm already there. Now, so Abraham works with you? Abraham or? works with me. He's okay. an employee of Advocate. So before you got to this point, you had to join in your employees and coworkers That's and right. stuff like that? So you send out an invitation. It's all opt-in. We don't grab your password. We don't look at all your direct messages or private messages. It's really about enabling you to do social media. We found that 70% of employees either don't talk about their company or uh, uh, because they don't know what to say or because they don't want to get in trouble. Right. And so they end up saying nothing. Yeah. So this is really the tool for those kinds of uh, people that are just kind of like, I know I want to, to talk about the brand. I'm, I'm happy that I work there. I'm having a great time or I'm really proud of what we're working on. But I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to talk about this. So this is about uh, building a an army, like at Rackspace, we have 5,000 employees. Yeah. Very few of which are uh, active about Rackspace on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Google Plus, right? That's or right. LinkedIn. That's right. Yeah, if those 5,000 people could be empowered to talk on, on social networks, they could uh, really unlock a lot of That's value. That's right. That's right. Because I'm not going to be able to get through the uh, edge rank algorithms <laughs> that Facebook's put up. You know, cause All if, by yourself. I, yeah, 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 I have 500,000 followers, but only you know, 5,000 of the will see any post in a week, right? That's right, uh, that's right. And so, this is interesting. Yeah, so here's that post that Abraham had, had uh, sent out here, Apple unveils a 64-bit iPhone uh, 5S. I knew we were going to talk about Apple. See, I, that's yeah, how I, I know, we got to bring it back. Pimp this on Twitter. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I tweeted. I, I tweeted this morning. I was like, "Who, who cares about what TechCrunch is doing? It's all Apple this morning." Yeah. Uh, so I click on here. I can actually, you know, there's a nut, bunch of actions I can take. I can retweet yeah. it, quote, reply, favorite. Quote is my favorite. It actually grabs the you, the uh, Twitter handle of the person who posted. It. This gives me an opportunity to, like, if I want to add a hashtag uh, or whatever I want, I can put it in my own voice, change it up. But then I can confirm it, sends it out, and actually gives it its own URL that's unique to me. Yeah. And so what we can do is we can give your company JavaScript you put on your landing pages, and when these links start coming back to your pages, you can actually track that back to each individual and validate the efforts of everybody involved. Now that's really cool. Um, 
This is sort of, uh, uh, social is one fifth of what I'm seeing as contextual technologies, right? Yeah. So what you're saying is uh, a big piece of your context. And the more I know about what you're saying, right. and where you are, and who you're with, and what you're thinking, and what you're looking at, yeah. the more I can serve you, the more I can uh, personalize life for you. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to empower the uh, employee with messages that they can push out to social network or themes that they can talk about, right? Yeah. Um, so are you tracking the employees of, uh, about what they're already writing about we're and not, what they're interested we're in? We're not tracking what, their what they're Facebook already, yeah, are. we're not tracking any of that because okay. I think that's just creepy. Okay. Uh, what we are tracking is the, the content that they either suggest or take action on within the system. Got it. But we're not about a policing unit. That's not what we're. That's not our goal. And I, honestly, I think employees would frown upon that. Yeah. And so that's no way to really gain trust. Uh, for us, it's really about putting a face to your brand. Yeah. How do we enable and empower your employees to be your representatives? They're proud of where they work. They're proud of what they're working on. Yeah. So why not give them an opportunity to talk about it and share it with their with their friends or fellow employees, um, and really put in a, a human spin on this, right? Yeah. Let's not make it about yeah. marketing. Let's make it about how do we personify your brand with real people that people want to talk to. Yeah. They don't want to talk to your logo. Yeah. And that's really what we, companies are doing all the time. Let's say we, we were doing uh, this for Apple Computer, right? Yeah. Let's talk about Apple. <laughs> and leading up to this, there was, you're not allowed to talk about anything. Right. And today, all of a sudden, you're allowed to, some people at Apple are allowed to talk. Yeah. Not everybody. You have to are be certified. You, yeah. you have to be certified. Is there a way for Apple to use Advocate to say, okay, these 50 people are certified to talk about the iPhone 5S online on Facebook now? Absolutely, or? and we're already doing that with several brands today. Okay. So we actually fire up like who are their main influencers, and this is kind of their gateway into using Advocate, yeah. is find the, finding the people that they know are already certified, that they can trust and just start queuing up and getting things going. In the future, we're going to build training programs into the system. Yeah. So now you can actually train people what's in bounds, what's out of bounds, make them feel confident about what they're doing, and then set examples for them. Like, yeah. these are the examples of what we want you to do, and instead of turning into this, don't do that, don't do that, that's just, nobody likes to be told what they shouldn't do. Do, do you, you're not yet looking at the audience or potential audience of the people in Advocate, are you? Because that would feed back to me, okay, like you probably have a lot of CTOs listening to you and a lot of CEOs, right? right? Where Rocky has a lot of, uh, engineers listening in, yeah. right? Yeah. And I might not want to send the same message to both groups, or I know that the conversion rate will be radically different for my product. Absolutely. Is there a way to say, hey. Segmentation? To know, oh, this group of people has, uh, is heavy on CTO touch points, you know, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so we're not doing that today, but I see that is exactly where we could go. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn is really good for this, because everybody puts their, yeah. puts their title into LinkedIn and puts their, their skills, you know, so if you're looking for somebody who's really skilled with C Sharp, you can right. find those people, right? Yeah, and that's one way of slicing it up. Another way that we've imagined is like, what if you're doing an event in Australia, right? You were just yeah. in Sydney. So let's say you're doing an event in Sydney and we want Rackspace people to, if they're in the Sydney area, to go see Robert yeah, speak, right? Yeah. And so what you could do is you could actually segment. So if you look at the screen here, we've got a directory of all your employees. You could actually create a custom group about all those people that are actually in Sydney, Australia, or have lots of followers in Sydney and tweet the message directly to them. See, that's where I was Making it contextual, of, right? Yeah. This is, this is Sydney, this is an event, this is Robert, they're all together in the same place, let's get that message out. This is how, uh, well, Rackspace is turning into a global company. Yeah. We have offices now in Sydney and uh, London and Amsterdam yeah. and Austin and San Francisco and uh, other places. You should just work in each one all the time. Like uh, every week you I go to a different you know, one. It, 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 one person doesn't scale that <laughs> well. But we can now have uh, people who are pushing out contextualized messages for each region and yeah. know that they're not wasting their effort. But you don't want one guy to be Facebooking about your company over and over and over. No. You want to do it once in a while. Right. And so that keeps the conversion rates up. It also makes sure that their friends don't unfriend them yes. you know, and stuff like yeah. that, right? And it, it's really important to do self-selection, right? Yeah. Because if you're curating your content, it's still going to be in your voice and it's going to be your opinion. Got it. You can take the content, like, if I see a piece of content in this feed, 
I can grab the stuff that I feel like is most relevant to the people that I want. We yeah. all build our own personal brands. I like to tweet funny things. You love technology, so you're tweeting technology things. We all kind of have that persona that we've either uh, created or we're trying to create. And this is a way that you can have all kinds of content. In fact, we really encourage our brands to, uh, the customers should always share about 80% of stuff that's really off your topic, right? How do we just create cool, interesting, relevant stuff that makes anybody look great um, and knowledgeable? And then 20% uh, you can talk about your product or events or things that you're working on. Yeah. The idea though is not to make everybody a drone. That yeah. is just the most horrible thing and I would feel really bad if any brand chose to use this product like that. Uh, let's say we at Rackspace we have several different accounts. We have like Rackspace UK, Rackspace yeah. Sydney, Rackspace Startups, yeah. and they're all tweeting or Facebooking. Do I see an advocate every time one of those official accounts does something so that I know as an employee, oh, I might want to retweet that item or something like so that? So in this screenshot, you can actually see, that, you know, this is coming directly from Advocate. In the future, we want to be able to show like, I could follow a, a specific subject matter yeah. or a specific group. Like I love what R&D is doing or I love what recruiting is doing, things like that. And then you can actually start peeling out contents relevant to that vertical, right? Uh, and then also subject matter expertise. Hey, what is all the stuff about Apple? What is all the stuff about startups? That kind of stuff. Yeah. So th those are the kind of things that in the future we're going to be uh, supporting. Um, today it's really just a master feed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we know that that's where we got to go. How how do you track back in all the signals about um, people talking about Rackspace, or if I was at Procter and Gamble talking about all of our brands? Yeah. Are you watching? Are you a, a, a thing? Is Advocate watching everybody who says something about Tide, for instance? Not today? really. There are tools that already do that right now. Yeah. So you're not, not a listening tool. No, we're not trying to go after that market. We're actually carving out this whole new market as we see it, right? This is like social workforce automation, or we're not sure what we're going to call it, but that's kind of where we're seeing it, is that this is like a new space. We're not going to be going after like the, the listening platforms. We're not really the engagement That's what Radium platforms. 6 does. Those guys right? do a great job. Yeah. Why, why try and take that away? What we're trying to do is create this new way of doing work. And this is about personifying your brand, people, pe putting people first, uh, and then creating great content. Because yeah. we really feel like in the future, that's where social is, that's where people want. They really want to engage with great content. It's really not about pushing advertisements. It's, yeah. it's really associated. Is there a leaderboard in Advocate? There is a leaderboard in Advocate. And what, what kinds of signals does it study to make me number one? So well, I, right I want to win. Yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. win the Advocate well, game. Right now, <laughs> yeah, right now it's really on a, uh, it's set up on a uh, clicks per tweet. Again, going back to content, right? If you're doing great well, I content. I win that right away. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what we're doing in the future is that we're creating other ways to slice the data yeah. so that, in, in essence, we can actually have lots of winners. Yeah. And, you know, Are just you tracking when somebody favorites an item yep. or likes it on likes, Facebook? Likes, favorites, plus ones that on shares, Google Plus. all that. Well, okay. Google Plus hasn't given us the API yet, but ah. we're, we're on the list. All so right. We're waiting for that. Okay. Um, we're really excited about Google Plus. A lot of our guys are big Android nuts, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you doing anything for mobile? Because that's where. Why? When thank news, you for asking. Well, when news starts breaking <laughs> about Rackspace, I'm always out on the beach, you know, walking around with my iPhone or yeah. my my Moto X phone, right? So this is a mobile application. This will be uh, ready in October. Yeah. And what it allows us to do is actually, you know, we're, again, putting your you for, uh, first and foremost in the, in the conversation. It's a picture view avatar, and then we give you your engagement score as well as your reach and posts. Yeah. Uh, really simple. We can, uh, if you brush up, it'll actually show you which employees are kicking your butt, yeah. the top two above you and then below you. And uh, in the future, what we kind of see that is as we get to know like who knows each other and which departments, we'll actually individualize that for each user so that you'll actually know who those people are all the time. It creates a lot more gamification when you're, when you're pole positioning against somebody you know, right? Yeah. From there, you actually strike to the, to the right, you pick your feed, you grab the feed, here's all the relevant content for you. It's color coded based on what groups you might be, whether it's R&D or marketing or PR, and then you just choose the content that you, you really in, you know, want to be engaged with. So, um, and I'm getting pop-up notifications. It's great for a demo. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that's all right. Yeah, we tweeted right. you right it's, before it's game. It's okay. So you grab the content you want, you can actually skim, uh, read through it, make sure it's appropriate. If it's something that you think's great, then you, you choose your uh, your Twitter, your Facebook, or your LinkedIn. You can actually see how many people in the in the uh, company have already you know, engaged with the content, and just choose it, and off you go. Okay. Yeah. 
makes it simple. Very cool. How do you charge for this? How, how With are you money. Guys doing? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's really easy for uh, up to 100 users. It's five dollars per user. If you buy 100 you users, you got to try it for there, free. For you can like try that? it for free for five users. So it's just enough to try it. Uh, not enough to really do a whole lot with it. But if you're a small company, five might be just enough. Yeah. Uh, and then over that, we do site licenses. Classic enterprise uh, set. And it's five, $5 a user, and then, well, sorry, what uh, were the pricing levels? Uh, well, it's $5 per user for individual users. You can buy in a bulk, 100 users for $2.99 a month, or we can do a site license where you sell an annual, and it's actually much cheaper in aggregate. No, no problem. And we get it at Advocate, and it's spelled weird, so. Yeah, A-D-D. So, like you're two adding your Advocate. Yes, double Ds. So, uh, Advocate with two Ds. Very cool. Yep. Thank you so much for coming Excellent. out. And, Thanks uh, for having me. And uh, looking forward to it. So, I guess we're uh, going to talk this afternoon at 1 o'clock about Apple, because Sam Levin was at the uh, press conference, so we'll get a little bit more into Apple stuff. Uh, what's this new M7? Uh, uh, motion sensor that they added to the iPhone. And I, I think that's the biggest deal. Yeah. Everybody's talking about the fingerprint scanner and stuff like that. But there's a theme that we're doing here at the Rackspace Studio. It's all about context and wearable computers, really. Where the future is going, and uh, that includes social. That's why we had Advocate here. So thank you very much for coming. We're going to be back in a, a probably, I think, a half an hour or so with another company. And uh, we'll definitely see you at 1 o'clock this afternoon talking about Apple. See you later. Seeing into the future live. Rackspace's continuous coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013 will continue in a moment. Fast and reliable streaming with cloud files. Find out more at rackspace.com. Still to come, the winner of the Rackspace Develop It, Wear It, Win It contest. Somebody's taking home $10,000. Find out who 